the, to, the elements only to match the string that I've typed in. So if I know I want the gland, there's no gland. I thought everything in Scott was. I mean, I'm basing that on watching the movie Glen Gary, Glen Ross, but um, I don't know. Dress. All right, there we get all the dress ones. And as we go back, it expands it. So, again, I did no code. I just put that attribute on that UL, and jQuery did it. Question, how does jQuery work? How does jQuery, and again, I'm asking this on a conceptual level, not, you know, not the nuts and bolts of it. You know, we're not going to try to explain all the ins and outs of it. But by what magic do I put in a data filter of true here, and all of a sudden I get that functionality for free? Any ideas? Well, what's key is looking up here. We have three things that comprise our jQuery, lines 8 through 10. We have a style sheet, all right? So, okay, the style sheet gives us some aspects of the appearance, right? That's what makes, you know, these things look like this. This is what makes this header look like that. Okay, so the style sheet is responsible for the way things look. That's what style sheets do. What do you suppose these two JavaScript pieces do. We could actually download those, right? Because we have the URL for them. We could go and we could examine them and view and see exactly what they do. More than likely, what happens is when the page loads, this JavaScript kicks in and scans our pages. And where it sees certain things, it triggers some code to add code snippets and stuff to our page. So in other words, that JavaScript scans our page, looks for everything, sees this data filter as being set to true, and adds both the little box for us to type into and the functionality to filter that list based on what we type in there. All right. So you're saying that whole line there with uh, all yeah. in terms of, well, outside of, obviously, that's in terms of the actual search. Okay, right. It's Oops. this one. So data role list view and data filter true is the glorified. Data filter search. true is what tells it. The data list view says, hey, treat this like a list, and it's a list that we want to be able to filter. So it allows us to filter it by adding that functionality. If we get rid of this, let's say we get rid of data filter, save it. We don't have that little box. So it didn't know, it doesn't know now to go and add the filtering capability to it. Because we put that attribute on that jQuery knows automatically to do that. So what does this mean? This means that learning to use jQuery is going to be largely like learning what little hooks to put in your code to get the magic to work. All right? To get the, well, one second. To get this header pinned, we just had to put data position fix, and that pins it down. To get the data filtering, we just had to say data filter true and so on down the line. You had a question? I see that you have the, the starting UL right before it. So that means that it will only filter up and to the, the closing UL. Am I assuming that? Yeah, it will filter the list. So if you have that UL moved up farther up, it's, are you safe to say that you can only filter partial chunks of your page or select info, so to speak? You can filter a list. You can filter a list. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if you could filter anything else, but you can filter a list, which, which makes sense. You have a list of things you want to filter and just pick some of those things. Now, is so if, some, what happens if 
someone just for the sake of understanding, someone has lots of paragraph information, is just going to ignore that in terms of. Uh, like is the, the, are the paragraphs in the list? No, they obviously. Yeah, then they then they get, don't get filters. No, just right. like. The stuff in the header, stuff in the footer don't get filtered because they're not in the list. So again, you filter the list. So, uh, I guess from a commercial standpoint, is this a case where people are looking for clothes that are in a list, so to speak, or I'm just trying to get a, it, get it, a broader context of how this can... Well, when, when, you know, you have a list of things and you want to filter them. What could that be? That could be looking for courses in a college. You have a list of a bajillion courses, or even if you broke down courses by department. You have a list of CISS courses. You want to filter just to see the courses that, are, that deal with web. So you could filter that. You have products, and you want to filter a list of products. You have a set of news stories, the top news headlines of the day and you want to filter them based on something. Maybe you're only interested in, in uh, stuff that happened in the Middle East. So you filter by Middle East. All right. You have uh, a list of sporting stories, and you want to filter by basketball. You have, I mean, why would you want to filter a list in any circumstances? Well, you have a long, you know, you have a bunch of things, whereas someone is, you know, only interested in, in a subset of that. And that's, I mean, that's what a filter is, you know. So anytime you'd want to filter, regardless of that. Now, you have a three-item list, you probably don't need to filter it, right? Because you can see all three items right there. Okay, all right? but your, your list items as I go through here. Yeah, have, this is a long can list. Can have more meat and potatoes and details and yeah, this is a, and titles. And, okay, so you can give it more substance than just... One Could you put more text in there? Sure. Okay, that's yeah, that's what I was that's what I was like, thinking of. Like, so I just kind of looking through your code there to because that's that's always what someone's going to say. I want more details, more details. So, okay. Well, do they want more details? If you think if you think of filtering in news stories, do I want my list to have a complete news story? No. I want my list to have a headline, maybe, so maybe a sentence, and I want a link to the complete news story. So if you have tons and tons of stuff, you're not going to have a lot of details, right? You're going to have a link to something that's going to provide the full details. Make, make sense? Yeah, like I said, I, I guess I always get used to headers, subtitles, little tidbit descriptions. I mean, that's kind of, I guess, when you can... Nowadays, when it comes to big, long lists, they always seem to have three, four different chunks. And like I said, I see that with yours. you got an image, you got a title, you've uh, you got a link, so it looks like it's heading in that direction. All right. So, that gave us a filtering capability. These list dividers simply are what give you this little functionality. Very iPod-ish looking list. So if you're thinking about this, um, you know, um, you could potentially, you know, if this was a news site, you could have, you know, U.S. News, World News, Weather, Sports, Entertainment or something like that. It's just a way of dividing your set, your list into sections. Now, are there other things can you do? Can you create sort of two-dimensional lists and you can do that? I don't know. Why don't you look into that for Wednesday and bring that in for the additional functionality? Notice how we added uh, a little image to it. We made the link the image, and therefore our list shows that little icon there. And really the rest of the page is just more of the same, just a bunch of items. Until we get down to here, and again, we've seen this before. 
The other thing, again, is they added a data icon, a star for find event, an, uh, an info icon for about us, and a grid icon, icon for the, the departments. Now, this begs a question, all right? Here there's a list of, I don't know how many tartans. There's a bunch of them. There's 500 lines, 500 or so lines in this HTML file. Does that mean you have to write the HTML for 500 of these or for 100 of these or however many tartans you have, write 500 lines of code? Do you think I did? No. They gave you a file and you copied and pasted. All right? But what if you were developing this website for real? All right? Would you want to hard code a list of 100 items? Of course not. Right? Why not? It's too much work. Something could go wrong. You could mess up a tag somewhere in the middle of the list. Any number of things could happen. You could create the link incorrectly. You could create the icon incorrectly. You can make a lot of mistakes when you have to type the same thing over a hundred times. Even if you typed it in once and copied and pasted it and changed it, you're going to make a mistake. So what would you likely to do in a more developed application? Instead of writing these essentially five lines of code for all hundred tartans, what might you do instead? You might have stored in a database a list of all the tartans that your store offers. All right? And in that database would be the name of the tartan, the image of the tartan, what the image looks like, and so on. And then your PHP code would retrieve from the database and create one of these automatically for each tartan. So you wouldn't have to write 100 times the same HTML code with just a few tweaks here and there. All right? You'd use server-side scripting to, to create that. All right. But with that database concept, mm -hmm. I understand you don't want to sit there and mm -hmm. type these things out a million times in a row, but I guess uh, in terms of the database concept, the, the question I have is that you know, if I download a thousand sports pictures, I guess what's the defining element that says, hey, I want to grab picture 001 versus the next sequence, picture 002, because things that seem to have that bulk are usually in just lengthy titles and nothing more than numbers. In other words, uh, I mean, right now, all your tartan have individual names. So I'm trying to figure out how the database concept would know how to grab individual names. Is it going through, let's grab everything in the whole folder alphabetically, numerically? I, I guess I'm trying to make that leap how it knows to grab everything. Not really sure I'm following your question. What you would do in a database is you'd put everything in the database that you needed to do this. So in other words, what you would do in this case is you would put in the name of the tartan. You would put in the name of uh, the image that you're going to use for it. You'd put in the name of the web page. And then the database would grab that and create that. Create this chunk of code. Look at this code. What's different between this one and this one? This is different than this. This is different than this. And this is different than this. This is different than that. So there's three items that are different. The URL, the image, and the name. So minimally, you would store those three things in the database. Because if those three things were stored in the database, then I can write a program to recreate this HTML. Now, in your case, when there's a thousand things, you would probably have some ID number associated with each image that you're talking about, and you'd store the name of the image. You'd have the name of the image uh, 
Um, put in there. How, how are they stored in a database when really the H3 is nothing more than a glorified title and another, the alt is nothing more than a little... How familiar are you with database design? Um, really not at all. Okay. Um, to answer that question is you could almost think of a database table as being like an Excel worksheet. Okay. All right. So, uh, what you could do is you could go and you could create an Excel worksheet or create a table in Access or some other database. And you could say, this is my tartan table. And you could say, my tartan table consists of three things. It consists of a name of a tartan. It consists of an image, a name of an image. And it consists of the name of a web page. All right? And then you just go in and you would enter in for each tartan, the name of the tartan, the name of the web page, and the name of the icon and just do that for all 100 tartans in the database. All right. The advantage is, is if you're running a business, there's a good chance that that list of tartans is going to appear in a bunch of places on your site. Or some subset of that is going to appear in a bunch of places in the site. And therefore, you don't want to have to duplicate code. So Essentially, you'd have a database, which is, would be like a spreadsheet that would have those three fields. And your program would read this, process it, and output the stuff from it to create these HTML tags. Uh, okay, the program would read those fields. Mm -hmm. Are we going to do that in this class? Um, maybe. I don't know. Possible. We could look at maybe some short examples, or maybe I could write a chunk of code that you could implement and all that. The problem is, is you know, I can't guarantee that everyone in this class has done database stuff and all that. And this isn't a database class, so I don't want to spend time going over database concepts. Is, um, is there such a class? Yeah, there's a lot of classes for that. I was saying in more of the forum that I haven't done it before, and I just wanted to know if I, if I was going to expect that. Don't do it, it okay. Fair enough. Okay, that's it for the Tartan page, I think. I think that's everything interesting and different on that. Let's look at this create form to click create. And the idea, I think, is, is that you're, we're going to let the user pick uh, different colors and uh, then, I don't know, maybe we'll store it in the database when we're done with it, and you'll be able to create a tartan of any mix of colors. Right now, it doesn't do anything like that. All right? Right now, it just is a form that allows you to add stuff into it. All right? So, let's look at this. All right, same stuff going on here, same stuff. The only difference, the, the back now goes to the tartan page, not to the index. All right, we have a form tag. And again, the form tag specifies the container of all the data that we're going to send to the server. And I may have forgotten the end form tag, which should appear at line 92. So this needs an end form tag. Think of a form as being a package of data that you're going to send all at once. All right? You won't necessarily have just one form for pay, uh, per page. That's pretty common to only have one form per page, but it's not like a rule. Uh, some sites, for example, you can log on or you can register. You know, there'll be a page, and if you have a user ID, fill this form in and log on. If you have this, if you have not registered, then fill in this part and register for the site. So those could be two forms. But think of forms as being, you know, a bundle that you're going to send to the server all at once. So in this case, for our tartan form, we're 
we're going to send all this stuff, every field in our form, we're going to send all at once. All right? So everything that we see here on the form. Everything that we're going to send, we're going to send. So the name, the information about the tartan, our color choice for one, our stitch count for thing one, or color one. Our color two, our stitch count for color two, and so on down the line. All right. So that's all part of our form. What's missing from here is the action and the method, which deals with the data that we're going to send to the server. All right? Since we're not sending any data to the server right now, it, you know, who cares that we don't have it? But if we were going to go and actually make this prototype actually do something, then um, we would need an action and a method. All right. A form typically is styled as an unordered list, okay? Because what is a form? But it's a list of items that we're going to send to the server. So we typically styled as an unordered list. And in our case, we have LIs, and some of them are list dividers to give us sort of the sections of the form. And then some of them are field contains, which means that there's, there's a field in that LI. So, for example, with this LI here, data role list divider, tell us about your tartan. So that appears here. Tell us about your tartan. Then we have a list item for the name. All right. And it contains a field. We have a label tag that associates this text with this form field. So we have a label that associates the label with the ID. And it's simply uh, an input text box with a placeholder of tartan name. Now, we don't see this in Internet Explorer. Let me see if we see that in Firefox. Notice how here it says tartan name, optional tartan description. As soon as we go into that field, that, dis that disappears. So it's like a little hint to tell you what to enter in that field. All right. Internet Explorer doesn't support that, so we don't see that. All right. We then have tartan info. Um, same thing. This is a text area. Nothing fancy there. All right. Then we have build your colors. Now here's where we go into PHP land. Why do we go into PHP land? Well, because a tartan consists of, at least our tartans consist of one, two, three, four, five, six different colors. And each of these little blocks for color is identical. All right, or virtually identical. Therefore, we would not want to have to repeat that code over and over and over again. So what we've done, this is similar to what I was talking about when I talked about building that tartan page, how we could pull from a database. Here we don't even need to pull from a database. We can simply create a little loop in PHP for i equals 0, i less than 6, i plus plus, what that means is this block of code from here to here is going to get repeated six times. 
So that's what this means. That from there to there, that code gets repeated six times. And what is all that code? All that code is the word color, the drop down for the color, the stitch count, word stitch count, a little slider view that allows us to slide and pick the stitch count. So let's look at that. Let's look at one iteration. We have a class called color set. We have a div. We have a label for the color. And we have a drop down. And our drop down consists of all those color options. I lied when I said the HTML code is identical. The HTML code is slightly different for each one because what we do is we actually plop in an ID. We plop in the number of the iteration of the loop. So in other words, the first dropdown has an ID of color dash zero. The second dropdown has a value, uh, or rather an ID of color dash one, and so on down the line. So that's part of it. The last thing we have is a div with a new HTML5 form type. Prior to HTML5, uh, there was no such thing as a range type of input element. And what is a range? A range is that little slider thingy. We specify that the minimum is 2. The maximum is 72. And the step is 2, which the browser ignores. Ideally, you're supposed to only be able to step in twos then if you say the step is two. So you go two, four, six, eight, and so on. But that attribute is not supported by, by many browsers. And the initial value is two. So this range is what this is. So notice... It starts out at 2. I should only be able to go in increments of 2, but I can go up to 3. Again, that's just because of browser support of that step doesn't work. So, what do I have? I have this block of code. Which is the color, the drop down, and the slider bar for the number of stitches, that's one of these gets created each, each time through the loop. Since the loop executes six times, I get six of them. And the HTML for the six of them are identical, except if we go and do a view source, except notice that For the first one, the ID is color 0. For the second one, the ID is color 1, and so on down the line. Remember, you have to have unique IDs. Now, this looping, I don't expect you to have that mastered at this point. So if the looping throws you, don't worry about that. The, 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 real, uh, the lesson of that looping is anytime you have repetitive code, you can uh, eliminate it through PHP by writing code that do, executes a loop and, and does essentially the same thing time after time. This is very similar to the code that we would have if I pulled the tartans from a database. All right? It would loop through, it would read the database, it would then create the name, the link, the image, and all that uh, using values from the database. Now, the range, HTML5 form thing. There is no range in HTML4 or XHTML. What other things are in HTML5 forms? Gee, I don't know. Maybe you can look some of those up for your Wednesday activity. 